All right, um, from Texas, Rob. Ron, some years ago, I was regularly hunting South Texas White Hills using a Saco Forester in Winchester's 243 using 90 green Remington Corlock ammunition. Boy, this guy is a, you know equal opportunity user here. Winchester, Remington, and Saco all together. Uh, let's see if it worked out for him. After losing several deer, uh-oh, something's going wrong. Losing several deer and hogs due to no knockdown and poor blood trail. A friend suggested that I use a lighter bullet, 55 grains, and a ballistic tip to boot. Okay, I know that bullet, 55 grain ballistic tip from Nosler. And I've seen it work pretty effectively in the very 243 Winchester you're talking about. Now, since uh, switching to that bullet, I have never lost an animal. Uh-oh, this is going to start some commentary. I've had 100% knockdown and stay down. Currently, I am using a round with a Nosler 55 grain ballistic tip Spitzer bullet loaded to 3,800 feet per second. With this round, I have never lost a deer hog, javelina, or an odd My range is typically 75 to 200 yards. I wonder if you could explain why the light, fast ballistic tip ground performs so well. Thank you. I learned a lot from your videos, and I really like your style. Well, thank you so much for that, Rob. Let's see if I can come up with a suitable answer for you. I think I can because I have satisfied myself as to what's going on here. Having done the same thing, I've shot a lot of game with the 243 and the 6 millimeter Remington using 100 grain, 105 grain, 90 grain, 80 grain bullets, 75 grain Barnes bullets, and just all kinds of them over the years. But when I, a couple times, used a varmint style bullet on deer, which was legal where I was hunting, I found dramatic results, the same that you're reporting. And what made sense to me is if you know anything about explosive, as we call them, varmint bullets, they break up rather quickly after entering you know, a target animal and they make sort of a softball sized wound. Everything happens very short distance, say three inches into the target. Things just go, all that energy is dispersed and the bullet breaks up into a lot of pieces. And if you put that bullet into the heart lungs of a deer, I mean, that is a significant percentage of its pulmonary system. The cardiopulmonary system is radically destroyed with that bullet. Whereas with a more controlled expansion bullet and deep penetration, yes, you have a long wound channel and you reach more tissue that way, but you don't have that larger wound pocket that you get with the more explosive bullet. And to me, that pretty much explains what's happening. And I've seen it several times with deer targeted just behind the shoulder, right over the heart. And it has such impressive hemorrhaging that those animals are pretty much done instantly. Um, I don't know that I would attribute it to hydrostatic shock that I think a lot of folks would. I think it's more the fact that you've just completely let the air out of them, as some of my friends would say. That is a radical decrease in their blood pressure. And as anyone who's ever fainted or come close to it knows, if you don't have adequate blood pressure, you faint. And the animal faints. And then within several minutes, the brain cells die. This is what the clinicians tell me, the doctors. 10 minutes and all your brain cells are died if they don't have fresh oxygen. And that's what the heart and lungs do. They put oxygenated blood, pump it up to the brain, it recycles to your system. So that's what's going on. And I think that's what you found out. Now, why do so many people say never use these frangible bullets on deer or any big game? And some states even disallow them. Well, it's because those bullets do have the potential to come apart before they reach the vital area. So if you put your shot right on the shoulder, hit that major bone or muscle group, there's some potential that you'll tear up the meat and not reach the vitals. So you do have to be extremely careful and precise with your shot placement if you use those more frangible bullets. And of course, your velocity, 3,800 feet per second, increase the potential for what <laughs> you've seen has been happening. That bullet just goes apart. There's so much energy in it that it has to go someplace and the bullet cannot hold it together. So that's what's happening. That was a good one, Rob. Appreciate the opportunity to expound a little bit on what I've discovered about those frangible bullets on deer.